Right. Item 12. The will to receive included contained in the thought of creation brought one out of uh, his atzmut itself to acquire the name Ein Sof 12. Now you can see how the light of Ein Sof departed from his atzmut, his self, in which we cannot utter any word and became defined by the name of Ein Sof, the light of Ein Sof. It is because of this above discernment that in that light there is the will to receive incorporated in it from his self. This is a new form, a new shape that is not at all contained in his self, or from whom would he receive. This shape, this form, is also the full measure of this light. And study it well, for it is impossible to elaborate here. Again. Again, item 12, the will to receive contained in the thought of creation brought him out of his self to acquire the name Ein Sof 12. Now you can see how the light of Ein Sof departed from his self, Atzmuto, in which we can not utter any word, become defined by the name, the light of Ein Sof. It is because of this above discernment that in that light there is the will to receive incorporated in it from his self. This is a new form that is not at all included in his self, or whom would he receive from? This form, this shape is also the full measure of his light. And study it well, for it is impossible to elaborate here. Indeed, there is a lot to discuss here, on the one hand. On the other, there isn't really, because here it speaks of how we separate from the thought of creation, and in what? To the extent that we have the will to receive. And the will to receive is revealed to be something which does not belong to the Creator, then the will to receive, along with the thought of creation and all the light that fulfills it, they become separate. They become the created being. The created being, worlds, patsufim, sfirot, everything that belongs to the created being and the, the mechanism that tends to the created being. That's what separates from the Creator. Continue. Item 13, prior to the Tzimtzum, the restriction, the disparity of form was indiscernible in the will to receive. In all his almightiness, this new form would not have been defined as a change from his light. This is the meaning of the words written in Yilke Avot, before the world was created, he and his name were one. He indicates the light of Ensof, and his name implies the place, which is the will to receive from his self, contained in the light of Ensof. He tells us that he is one and his name one. His name which is Malchut of Ein Sof, being the desire, namely the will to receive, that has been engraved in the whole of reality that was contained in the thought of creation. Before the restriction, it is not considered that there is any change and differentiation between him and his light and the place. They are one and the same. If there had been any differentiation and shortcoming in the place compared to the light of Ensof, then there would certainly be to Mkhinot, to discernments there. Check it. Meaning that before the restriction, there was no difference between the place, the will that the Creator created, and the light that filled that will. We cannot imagine to ourselves how 
It could be that there's no difference, but that is before it was revealed in the light. Look, we're talking only from the perspective of the created being, from the side of the created being, creation. So in the created being, no force was revealed which rejected or awakened it to come closer, to move further away, to do something with respect to the Creator. There was no difference between it and the Creator. It's like, um, like in an embryo, for example. It doesn't, in the beginnings of its development, it still doesn't, it's not felt as something that can exist independently. 